Well, I've gotten started and I'm going to work on it in sections. That's the 1920s library table that I paid $20 for at an estate sale. Oh, two weeks ago. <clears throat> uh, in New Jersey, got it out of a basement. It had been down in that basement forever and it was uh, pretty filthy condition not so bad well, I just wanted to show you uh, what the top looks like now I'll come over here and let you see I don't know how well it uh, looks out here in the sunlight you might think it looks horrible um, it's mahogany and mahogany can be can be stained brown it can be it, it can have that reddish mahogany color in this case, the table was given the dark brown mahogany treatment. And um, so you can see down here, I haven't done anything to the base yet. Uh, I did not strip this and I didn't want to strip it. I'm not into that. If I can save old finishes and clean them up, that's what I do. Now I'm going to be using this as a desk uh, for myself. And I bet this doesn't look very good. I bet when I watch this video, it's going to look horrible. The top hasn't dried yet. And when it dries, I will buff it to degloss it a little bit to get it down to a satin uh, color. A satin finish is what I mean to say. But what I like is all the old original alligatoring of the old shellac. You see that? There you go. That's age. That's 100 years of good old hot South Jersey summers and freezing cold winters that give you that look. And their little imperfections does not bother me a bit. Let me back up and let you see. Um, listen, if you want something to look perfect, you know where to go. <laughs> and it's not in the antique world, right? So I like an old finish that shows its history. Uh, even like a cigarette burn or some old ink that has spilled. I like all that. So this will dry. And then I'll take it down, get the gloss off of it. The, um, I've, I've done nothing uh, to the bottom of it, as you can see. 1920s library table. That might be the desk chair that I use. That also is an antique. Now you say, no, it's not. We had those in the 70s. They've been making that kind of chair for hundreds of years, centuries. But that one is an old one. I do need to do some repair on the seat. But this is a great big old, this is mahogany as well. And this one goes back to the era of the 20s. Now more than likely, this was not a dining room chair. Could have been, but a lot of these chairs were just called occasional chairs. They were used in hallways. They were used next to desks, uh, next to a grandfather clock. It's really the ladder back. It's a very tall ladder back chair. So it's gonna look nice with that desk. Um, to clean the thing, I used a kitchen degreaser. Oh my goodness. Uh, very gently, a triple aught, a four aught steel wool. This is the, this is fine, fine steel wool. And you clean it with a degreaser is what I used. Wipe it off with paper towels. The neat thing about using the uh, four aught uh, steel wool, I think this is the one I cleaned it with, is when you're scrubbing the wood, let's go down here. This is still a little bit wet. Um, but I should spray some more de, you know, degreaser on here. But when you're, when you're, when you scrub like this, 
with the steel wool very lightly. Now I'm not digging into this, I'm just going very lightly. You're actually getting some of the old grime and dirt, the old Johnson's wax, and you're working it into some of the scratches. And it actually, see these scratches here? You actually don't even need any scratch cover because you could you can almost fill them in with some of the dirt that's already on the piece. Okay, so you clean it. Uh, and if it's got its old shellac on it, as this one did, they were still shellacking in those days. Um, this is just, you know, cheap hardware store stuff. This has been hanging around for a hundred years. Put a little scratch cover. I don't care. It doesn't matter. This just says for dark woods. That's fine. I worked that in uh, with uh, a steel wool. Worked it in. Wiped it off. Let it dry. And I used a, a rubbing oil satin finish here uh, over top of the old shellac that's already on the piece. And this is just a neutral. And this is a Minwax. I like Minwax products. And I applied that with a steel. No, I did. Did I use a steel? No. This I spray, uh, poured on. I used a steel wool to work the scratch cover in, and then the wood sheen, I, I used a uh, cloth that had no lint in it and just buffed the whole thing. And as I said, it'll dry in a couple of hours, and then I'll take the 4 aught steel wool, buff it. Probably won't, probably won't put a second coat on it. And then I'll work my way down. I'll do the whole desk. And there's a nice drawer here I have to clean. And uh, that's going to be a desk that I'll use in the basement workshop area. Well, it won't be the workshop. It'll be in my sort of packing and shipping area. Um, I may even set my computer printer up on it. Because I don't really have a desk set up yet. And I'll put an old filing cabinet next to it and... Uh, set up one of my old radios I brought back. There's an old uh, Sears and Roebuck drum speaker, WLS. That's a 1920s speaker. And then this is an old... Uh, I took... I do have the, all the tubes. I don't know why I took them out, but I did. That's an old uh, TRF at Water Kent from the early, uh, from the mid twenties. So you know how I'll set everything up. This is the different steel wool that I've got. So this is the, uh, see here, this is the four aught. You have the, don't do, do it, don't do this. You'll rip off the whole, you'll rip the veneer off with that. Go way down here to this fine uh, stuff. What else is in here? I've got all kinds of stuff in here. Anyway, I thought I would show you my progress on that. It's a nice day out here. It's nice and sunny, and uh, we had a break from the cold temperatures. Well, that's that. Let's go do something else. I guess I should say about that desk, I'm sure I'm going to get comments on it, so maybe I'll just clear a few things up. I know that there are imperfections in the top, and as I said, if you want to get rid of them... <clears throat> You can reamalgamate the shellac. Now that means um, taking denatured alcohol, which is a solvent for old shellac, and you you can take a steel wool or a paintbrush. You get your denatured alcohol on there, and you and you sort of go over it with a steel wool. That will uh, reamalgamate it, so it loosens up. It breaks up all the alligator hide cracking. I'm trying to hold myself on still. And you'll get a smooth finish. Um, <clears throat> that'll also get rid of more of the imperfections. Like you could see there was a ring where somebody put something on there. I really did not want to get into all the hassle of reamalgamating re the shellac. Yes, I've done it. You can do it. If that were going to be maybe like a, if that were a nice coffee table right in the center of a living room or something, you might want to do that. But it does get messy when you try to reamalgamate the shellac. It's just not something I was interested in doing. And again, it's wet. It's out in the sunlight. 
all the imperfections are going to show up. But listen, once it's finished <clears throat> and then you get it stuff on it, since it is a desk, a desktop and a desktop would show uh, natural wear, it's fine. I just wanted to let everybody know that you can you, you can be more extensive uh, with your restoration. I'm doing it to please myself, so I chose to you know, not reamalgamate the shellac. And that lamp sheet is the wrong size. Let's talk about that lamp. We gotta talk about lamps. Do you have lamp envy? You know you do. Now we're not talking about the ceiling fixtures cause we talked about them in another video. This guy right here, yes, that lampshade's too small. It's just sitting there. That is a great big old parlor lamp. That's right out of the 1920s. And they used to have, they used to make these humongous things. I don't even think I'm gonna be able to use it in the 1925 bungalow. It's just too big. And it takes a lampshade twice the size uh, of, of this one. So, uh, but let's, let's pull this guy off for the moment and let you see the double sockets at the top and then the, the, the two pull chains. Let me put this down. What am I going to do with it? Let's put it on top of this, uh, torsier. Is that going to, no, that's going to mess it up. All right, whatever. <laughs> put it in, in the old, put it in granny's old rocking chair. Um, that's been around in my family forever. Ooh, I think grandma, that great, let's see, great, that came out of the, uh, yeah, that's, I'd have to ask, that's, that's, that's old. Um, so anyway, look at this, read it, you can't see it, I don't have it, look at that, look at that mahogany lamp. Now this has been in somebody's, you can see some of the finish has come off down here, so look at that, that's as thick as an old dining room, uh, table legs, spider webs, and some of the finish has gotten taken off of that. That's a nice, great big old mahogany lamp, and it it deserves to be in a, a grand, grand room. Yes, I'm weeding through. I'm getting it. I'm getting it. I'm getting it. We're not there yet. I've got to get this keyboard out of here. Look at these old 1930s mirrors down here, and um we, I'm not going to zoom up because we already looked at the clocks. Yeah. My music stand, there's some Victorian furniture in here, and I'm working on my getting the um, rest of the things off of the bench, the workbench, some of the old radios, the old clocks. Pipe organ uh, ranks, or a rank there. <laughs> and I'm going to take apart my Etsy. Oh my gosh, Etsy. Why did I say Etsy? Um, not awful. My Esty. Shame on me. My Esty pump organ. Uh, I had to take it apart to get it in here. And uh, in the summertime, I'm going to completely take the thing apart. And that's going to be a whole nother series as I redo the bellows and restore that entire old pump organ. I can't wait. That'll be probably like the fifth pump organ that I've restored in my lifetime. We're going to get inside and see what the mice have done to it. And uh, we'll get that all straightened out. And then I've got clocks to work on. And they're just, there's not enough. There's just not enough hours in the day. Look at this old... Now this probably goes back to, I want to say it was the Susquecentennial, and I believe that was 1926. This looks like a 1920s frame, and these frames with this convex glass, they were popular then. And this is Philadelphia's Independence Hall. Uh, sepia, uh, um, a tinted photograph of Independence Hall, the backside of it with the Commodore Barry statue right there. So it's a very 1920s frame, and uh, I, it, it probably was a souvenir, something made available in, in uh, I'm just trying to remember, I think 1926. Was that right? Was that the Susquecentennial? I don't know. And then I'll talk about that some other time. 
And then I've got these, these wonderful 1940s. Uh, I've got two of these. Well, I guess I better show them to you. You're gonna get, me you're gonna say, let me see, let's see. Let's get this, the boy and the rabbit out of the way. I wasn't really ready to show you these yet, but I'm just fooling around in the basement here. Look at these. Right after the war, this is just a classic circa 1947, 48. And they, you hang them on the wall. They're metal frames, reverse painted glass. Yeah, Dorothy Draper all the way. And you plug them in and you turn them on and they'll light at the bottom and they'll light at the top. So you get this really neat, this is the beginning of that sort of exotic, we were talking about that the other day, and the abstract lamps and everything. So and I just wanna, I'll probably touch up that one petal right there. That's the only paint loss on it. This is reverse painted on glass. And this is the way they came uh, in two different colors, the frames. Yeah. So I'm going to have to do some work on those. I'll show you one more thing. An abstract water color that's from the 40s. I guess it's an original. Let's turn it over. This frame isn't very hot to trot. It's just a piece of paper in an old frame. And it's a, maybe somebody in some art school did it. I don't know, but very abstract, very late forties. Yeah. It's just like, you know, I love the cityscape here. Now USC, University of South Carolina. I don't know. That doesn't look like university buildings to me. So. Who knows? I don't know. But she's looking very 40s. And she's standing on a Victor record. A 78 RPM. Grits. This has to... Somebody must have done this in the South. And then, uh, let's see, Yellow Cab. It's very abstract. And it's not signed. No, it's not dated. It's in a... It's in a an, an oak frame that's a lot older than than this original. <clears throat> I don't know where I got it. I got it from somewhere. You guys like it? Probably some art student. Uh, but it's just, you can hear like the bebop jazz. I love it. I, th I might keep this, but get a, get an appropriate frame for it and get some glass on it. Get a piece of glass on it. I don't know. What do you guys think? What do you think the USC stands for? I don't know. But I thought you might like... Ooh, I thought you might like to see that. Oh, now I've done it. I went and got it to where it's going to... Let me fix that before I... This is what you get for doing it uh, with one hand. All right, fine. We'll take the whole... <clears throat> We'll take the whole thing out of there. Yeah, that's watercolor. And a football cleat and a telephone. That's really unique. Well, that's it. I'm just fiddling around over here. Uh, I don't think I want to show you anything else. <clears throat> well, thank you for watching, everyone. And uh, I guess we'll do, <laughs> we'll do this again some other time. Uh, yeah, that's probably going to be it. Okay, we'll call it quits. I'm Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop saying thanks for watching and hanging out with me in the basement. Wait for the cat. And so long for now.